I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. Today we are doing some boho Dollar Tree DIYs and this is like my fourth, fifth, maybe sixth time doing this type of video and I just, I just can't get enough of it. They're so much fun. So I'm not gonna stand here talking because I have so many great ideas. So let's go to project number one. Okay, I am so excited for this DIY. I am starting with two of these Dollar Tree fish bowls and the chopping mats. Now, the first thing I did was take one of the chopping mats and mark how tall I wanted it to be sticking out of the top of this fish bowl. And bear with me here, it is kind of hard to see what I am doing. I did realize that and I did change my background, so just hold on a second. I cut out those pieces and also then used some hot glue to secure it into place to make a nice little cylinder. And here is the change in background so you can see what I'm doing. I then glued the cylinder into one of the fish bowls. Now these fish bowls perfectly kind of attach to each other like so and I am making a really cool trendy vase by just hot gluing the two bowls together. I used a ton of hot glue so it doesn't look very neat so my solution to that is using some Dollar Tree caulking to fill in the little crevices here. I filled in between both of the bowls and then also where the bowl met the chopping mat and along the seam on the back of the chopping mat. Of course, this shape is pretty cute, but I decided to use some polymer clay to make some handles. So I started by rolling out some little like, you know, clay snakes as they used to say in kindergarten. And I made four little tubes like this. And then stuck them onto the side of the base to get the proper shape. Then I put them in the oven and baked them for about 15 minutes at 275, but be sure to follow the instructions on your clay. Once those handles were done, I used some more hot glue to attach them to the sides of the vase. And I used Gorilla hot glue throughout this entire project because it has a super strong bond. With the handles on, I'm using this matte tan paint and I am mixing it with some baking soda, of course, because I just figured that could kind of hide some of the imperfections from the caulking. And because I layered together a bunch of different elements to make this vase, it was just the uh, perfect paint technique. And it took about three coats of paint. On the final one, I just did straight acrylic paint with no baking soda mixed in. And here is the finished result. Next, I am doing kind of another vessel vase type project using these two gift wrapping boxes and my secret ingredient all of these foam hair rollers now i'm inspired by the like fluted everything trend that's going on right now and i thought why not make some really cute planters so i hot glued the foam rollers down and i found that the hot glue sort of melted the foam so the best way to do this is to glue onto the container first let it sit for a second and then place the roller down so that way you're not melting the roller. And I just placed all of these right next to each other like so and filled up the entire container. Now this one, it took three packs and one from a fourth pack, which was kind of annoying that I had to open another pack just to use one. For this tall skinny container, I'm using the longer skinny foam rollers that Dollar Tree sells. 
because I wanted to create a little bit of variety and I just did the exact same process going around this entire cylinder. To paint the larger planter, I'm mixing a terracotta and burnt orange color together and just painting on the rollers. It was very, very simple. I found that this color really covered the rollers well. I ended up doing two coats of paint just to make sure I got into all of the little crevices and everything looked nice and consistent. And then for the taller vessel, I used white acrylic paint. It took about four coats to completely cover it because of how bright the rollers were, but I think they both turned out awesome. Next, let's use some Dollar Tree items to make some textured wall art inspired by the two images you see on the screen. Now, I specifically love these 5x7 Dollar Tree frames because they're made to have a little extra depth in them. You can see by these little foam pieces I'm removing right here. Now, I'm using some muslin fabric, and because it's very thin, I decided to cut out a piece of white paper to layer on top of this backing piece here. Then all I did was take that little cutout piece and laid it on top of the fabric and cut out the fabric, making sure I gave a little seam allowance around all of the edges. Next, I used the tiniest bit of hot glue on each of the corners of the paper here, flipped it over and secured it down. Then I took my scissors and I snipped off each of the corners. That way it would be so much easier for this fabric to lay flat when I folded it over the edges. I was so excited when I saw Dollar Tree brought these rugs back into stock and they're gonna be perfect for this project. I started by cutting out a piece that would be a good size for this frame. Once I got it all trimmed down, I love this little tassel element, so I decided to use some hot glue across the top and then fold the tassels over so they look like they're just kind of effort so they look like they're kind of effortlessly laying on top of this scrap of fabric. I also decided to give the tassels a trim just because I thought they looked a little long. <laughs> Now to really elevate this, I decided to fray the edges just a little bit so it didn't look so neatly and freshly cut. Then I found the middle of the backing here and then the middle of the little tapestry piece and hot glued it down to the backing. Now for the second frame, I decided to mix it up a little bit. I changed the direction of the pattern so it was going vertical instead of horizontal, and I decided not to use tassels on this one. But I repeated the same exact steps as before and even made sure to fray the edges a bit so that I'd have a coordinating but not completely matching set of art. I put everything back into the frames and here it is. This has to be one of my favorite DIYs and I can't wait to style it in a gallery wall. Well, that wraps up this I guess episode since it's sort of a series of boho Dollar Tree DIYs. Now in the comments, I wanna hear what your home decor style is. I personally like a mid-century modern, sophisticated look with a little bit of that natural boho elements. And if you wanna see even more boho Dollar Tree DIYs, you're in luck. I have a whole playlist for you to check out on the screen here. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.